Thank you for joining us, Chatri. What a great event tonight. Can you share with us your overall thoughts on the event? I think uh, the main card was crazy. I think it was TKO, KO, 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 and then an all-out war, and then another all-out war. It was just, uh, I mean, the co-main and main were just, you know, insane. There's a little bit of controversy at the main event of the Christian Lee versus Oak fight. What are your thoughts on that one? I thought it was a very close fight, uh, but I personally thought the judges got it wrong. I thought Christian Lee won unanimously. Uh, I thought that uh, he uh, had effectively two knockdowns, right? He had one really, really spectacular knockdown. I think it was a second or third round. And in the fifth, uh, again, he was about to finish uh, Oak. Now, I do think it was a close fight because, uh, you know, even though Christian did have the takedown uh, attempts and the near submission, from the back standing and then the two, uh, one knockdown and one uh, clearly Oak was hurt in the fifth round. Um, Oak landed a lot of straight right. So I, um, yeah, it is what it is, but I think the judges got it wrong. I just, uh, you know, Oak is clearly, clearly one of the best lightweights on the planet, full stop uh, for any organization. Um, Oak, Ray Yoon just went through Marat, Eddie, and then, you know, he had a very close fight with Christian. Um, you know, I'd like, uh, you know, uh, uh, to talk to both of them and stuff and, and, and see um, what might transpire. But, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I definitely thought that uh, Christian won the fight, even though it was close. This first question will go to Nisi Icasiano of IB Times. Nisi, the floor is yours. Chakri, I just want to comment on what Dana White said uh, most recently regarding the hybrid MMA match that you're planning to put up this coming December uh, I, I didn't catch all the comments. I mean, I, I, somebody had told me he mentioned something, but I, I wasn't cl clear. So I wasn't, I didn't uh, watch the comments or anything. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Okay. Uh, now, uh, this, now that uh, Rod Tang tested positive for COVID-19, does that put the fight in danger this coming December? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I, first of all, I, I wish Rod Tang... Uh, you know, a full and speedy recovery from COVID. So, you know, COVID obviously hits people in different ways. Some people are, are asymptomatic and some people obviously, uh, you know, have, have a, a lot of difficulty in it and, and, and many people obviously um, pass away. So I, I hope that Rotang uh, has a speedy and full recovery. So I'm not even thinking right now about December 5th. I'm really just focused on, uh, you know, wishing him uh, a full recovery. Our next question will go to Nick Akin of South China Morning Post MMA. Hey, Chatri. Um, yeah, I think you spoke about it already, but um, Christian, and uh, do you think we can do, are you going to do a rematch? And do you think December is, is too soon? Would you like to see that for the 10th anniversary show? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, what did people, what was the general consensus, by the way, on, on the Christian Lee versus Ray Yoon Oak fight? I, I'm just curious what people thought out there. You know, in the media, what did you guys think? Uh, did, yeah, I'm well, just curious. Well, we had our fight companion. I think all of us on that thought Christian won and uh, yeah. we were definitely shocked. And um, I mean, even looking at Oak's face, like, I think he was surprised. Right, <laughs> right, won, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, I thought the judges got it wrong on this one. Um, yeah, but you know, I guess it's one of these things, right? You just, you have to finish fights. Otherwise, you know, the, the, the judging is, you know, every major global organization in the world has this where some fights just, you know, bad judging sometimes. And we saw that you very quickly reviewed Denise Zamboanga against Ham Sohi. Do you anticipate a review for this fight? I don't know. I, I, I'd have to see. I, I, I did. Uh, uh, Ken, uh, uh, Christian's uh, father had asked for a review. But again, I, it was just everything's happening so much. I, I so, so quickly. I didn't uh, have time to talk to anybody. So I, I, yeah, I didn't have any words yet. I mean, I have to wait for, uh, you know, uh, all the officials and, and, and judges. But I mean, so many things happened. I'm just trying to think of what else i can ask you but i, I yeah what what do you think about what's next for martin Nguyen? because um that was shocking first round tk there uh, yeah being... you know i i thought martin uh made the same mistake he did with tan the, you know uh martin obviously has massive ko power with that overhand right but you know with an overhand right you're going to be susceptible to short straight rights right um and and martin you could just see his he, he leaned into it overextended and, and he didn't set anything up so, you know, I think that was what I was surprised by today with Martin. He didn't really set up his shots, you know, the way he would normally, um, you know. And so when he when he tagged uh, 
came in with one punch. Then he thought, okay, I'm going to come in another one, but he didn't even, no, no jab or anything, just loading up. And then, so, you know, Kim just threw a straight right. And yeah, it was, uh, um, I think uh, Martin has to uh, go back to his more almost counter striking or, or, or patient way of striking as opposed to, you know, head hunting. And sorry, very quickly, I know there's other people on the chat. Um, just is, is that their next next title shot for Kim against? Yes, the winner yes, of yes, yes. Uh, Kim will face the winner of Gary Tonin and, and, and Tan Lei. Um, yeah. Our next question goes to Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. I, was saying, I, mean, I was on the side. I thought Christian won the fight. Just to give you my my feedback there. Um, but on a positive note, who impressed you most? I mean, obviously there's some big big performances tonight. Who impressed you most on this card tonight, or more than one? Oh uh, man, like I said, the main card was insane. I think um, Anatoly's KO was just vicious. What I what I realized from watching him in this fight is, you know, he's a heavyweight. Obviously, he's a world class wrestler, but uh, his striking was very crisp. I mean, his timing, his head movement, his left hook. I mean, just you know, he, he's got really uh, natural striking ability. So obviously, coupled with world class wrestling. Uh, you know, Anatoly's now 10 and 0, so he's getting a title shot against uh, Arjun Bular. Um, yeah, definitely deserved it. Where's, where's Kang, uh, Kang Jan G1 fit in the heavyweight division? Obviously, he's unbeaten as well. He's got a knockout uh, win against Amir. Yeah, Amir so, so so he was he was offered a few fights, but his eye hadn't recovered. So that he kind of like, you know, he was offered uh, Bushesha. He was offered um, yeah a couple of fights and he turned them down because of his eye. Uh, I guess he 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 uh, uh, hurt his retina uh, against um, uh, Alec Bari, right? Yeah. Um, and, and since then, we've offered him, I think, two or three fights, and he's turned him down. So, uh, you know, I wish him uh, a speedy recovery as well. I don't know. I haven't talked to him, uh, so I don't know if his eyes still bother him or not. But obviously, yeah, you know, he's still early in his career. He's I think he's four and zero, five and zero. Obviously, uh, impressive. Yeah, I wonder. I thought he might be injured. I thought it might still be the eye. Great. Yeah. Um, off topic, Ilias Enahachi, Superlek. I think you disagreed with that result with the time, and that was going to be that was going to be an immediate rematch. I was just thinking about this week. Is, is there any news when they might run it back? Um, man, I, I, there's, I have so many uh, fight cards in my head, but yes, they they are they've been offered that fight already um, for a upcoming card. I, I can't remember which one. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just uh, I came straight from the stadium, uh, you know, to this uh, BC because of all the um, the bubbles and and, and the uh, restrictions um yeah i mean it's been a little bit uh, chaotic so normally we obviously have our our, our post-fight press conferences uh, you know in the stadium but here we have it here in the hotel capitan won again tonight very competitive fight there's been a little bit of talk between him and nongo fighting either for the kickboxing title or the muay thai title is that a fight that we could see potentially in the next few months or next year uh, it doesn't look like uh, Capitan wants to uh, challenge uh, for the Muay Thai world title uh, against Nango. I, I, I don't know. You know, I haven't really thought about it. Um, I think it'd be a fun fight uh, for the fans. Uh, and obviously, Capitan does come from a Muay Thai background. And, you know, his, uh, his uh, daunted uh, right hand and, and left hook, imagine in four ounce gloves, you know, yeah. the damage he would, he would do, you know. So uh, it could be a fun fight. Yeah. Next question goes to. Raj Sarkar of Essentially Sports. Hello, Charlie. First of all, it's, it has been an amazing night, back-to-back -back action. A lot of fighters really looked amazing tonight. So I just wanted to know which are the fighters that grabbed most of your attention. Like I said, Anatoly to me, 10-0, uh, and 0, um, you know, it's amazing. Like, obviously, you know, he's had a tremendous run uh, before one, but even even during one. And, and uh, you know, he is world championship caliber. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I mean... The way he moves, his wrestling, his cardio, and his boxing, you know, he's just, uh, he blew me away. Uh, really, uh, just incredible. Um, and uh, obviously, I was uh, I was blown away by Kim Jae-wung as well, uh, that, that, that uh, technical right hand. Um, I think many people were expecting Martin to knock Kim out, and, and so it was a real shocker. Um, but yeah, I mean, main card, like I said, with TKO, KO, 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 and then two absolute wars that... Uh, were close fights. Also, Stan Fiorek recently took to Instagram and it seems that the one Adam Wett Grand Prix results are out and it seems Stan Fiorek is going to face Ham and Ritu Fogart is going to face Itsuki Hirata. So what do you make of these matchups? Well, you know, the fans decided this one, right? So uh, we and we announced uh, during the broadcast and uh, yeah, so Itsuki faces uh, Ritu and, and Stan faces uh, Ham. 
And in a way, it's like the semifinals are two grapplers ver and then the other side is two strikers, right? So it's a striker versus striker in, in, in one semifinal and it's a strike, uh, it's a grappler versus grappler in the other semis. And so the final is definitely going to be, you know, it's going to be a striker versus a grappler um, final. So it's, uh, I mean, the Adam Wade division is so close. I mean, the four athletes are just, uh, you know, phenomenal. And and uh, the margin for error, you know, it's, you know, it's hard to pick who's going to win. Also, Chatri, you recently you took to social media and you posted that you've won a brown belt in PJJ, which is an absolutely a big achievement. So, and in recent times, you've seen a lot of exhibition matchups, a lot of things happen and fans are actually buying it. So can we expect Chatri Sikyodong to enter into a BJJ or an exhibition event like that in the future or maybe after years? Uh, against who? You know, I, I, I'm not sure that fans want to see me. Uh, obviously, I'm not a, a world championship caliber martial artist. I am a lifelong martial artist. I am an expert in Muay Thai and I, I'm, I'm pretty decent at jiu-jitsu now. Uh, but I don't know if, 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 you know, who would fans want to see me against, you know? I, who do you want to fight? Like, if you are given the chance. Um, Anyone from the celebrity? Yeah, I, 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 I haven't even, you know, I haven't even <laughs> given it honestly a serious thought. Maybe you versus Dana White someday. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, fans obviously always joke around about that one. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, Dana is up for fighting. Thank you, Raj. We're going to open the floor to Jude Briosis of Overtime Heroics MMA. I also thought question one, but straying away from that controversial main event. Um, how does it feel seeing all these new fighters coming into one and flourishing into absolute superstars? Like we saw um, Marcos Almeida win in the first round. A 17-year-old Victoria Lee win, a, win with another impressive win to go 3-0 and zero at 17 years old. And of course, we just saw Oak beat um, his third world champion in a row to win the belt. Is it pleasing to see the, see the these talents grow and reach the stars at one championship? Yeah, you know we're we're again uh, constantly scouring the, the globe. We have, we, we have a, a scouting team all over the world. We look for the very very best rising stars or established stars who are up for free agency and and who are thinking about exploring other options. You know we're always in discussions with athletes all over the world. So, um, you know I always uh, 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 you know tell the competition team to to we have to upgrade our, our roster every day, every week, every month. Even though again. Uh, many of the division, I would argue, are, are the world's best already. But you still want to keep uh, keep that pipeline of, of you know the world's best talent coming in. Um, yeah, so you know I think every division you can see just in, in the last twelve months what's happened with the heavyweight division, right? Um, so it's it's uh, it's a really exciting time for one right now. Our next question will go to Kyle Siegel of Going Live Podcast. Good. No, um, thanks again for, you know, giving us a great card. Um, congrats on your brown belt. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I'm sure that's something we won't see Dana ever doing anytime soon. But I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think Dana knows how to fight, right? I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's different. I mean, I've been doing Muay Thai for 37 years, still train every day. I do BJJ five, six times a week. Uh, yeah. So, of course, but um, no, so I wanted to ask you, you know, with the wrong tank COVID incident, of course, you know, we want nothing more than him to get better, but sounds like, you know, you're just trying to pioneer more MMA, you know, kind of matches. And do you think if it goes well, Ron Tang recovers, you know, he fights DJ that you're just going to keep going this through different divisions too, you know, creating this. No, style. you know, this whole road tank DJ thing was a, uh, uh, what I what I what I asked my team was I said look we're doing a tenth year anniversary you know there's going to be the biggest show in the history of the company um, and we want to do something spectacular and something different and I said let's also pay you know homage to uh, Asian MMA and the history of Asian MMA you know Pride uh, still uh, you know uh, prior to one at the time was the greatest martial arts organization in the, on, in the world. Uh, and Pride, I think, was 10 years, and then, and, and then eventually, um, you know, uh, it uh, got bought out. Um, this is our 10th year anniversary. I said, look, let's do something, obviously, you know, with world title fights, but then at the same time, let's do something that uh, celebrates, you know, the true spirit of, you know, what Japan has started. You know, uh, people, I don't think people realize uh, Shuto is actually the first mixed martial arts organization um, in, in history. Uh, I think it was started in 1983 or, or 84 or around there. And it's still today, you know, in Japan, obviously. And uh, so, yeah, I just told my team, hey, think of a crazy fight that we could do that would, you know, it's a, it's a once-off thing. It's not like we're going to do this uh, every event or with other other fighters. Um, it was just a, a crazy idea to celebrate, yeah, Asian MMA. 
Our next question goes to Steve Irvine of MMA Radio. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk. Congratulations on such a big event. The MMA community are talking very loudly about this, so congrats. It's amazing. Uh, hey, thank you so much. Ask. It's crazy, crazy night of fights. It's spectacular. I mean, the, the kickboxing, the Muay Thai fights, the MMA fight, it was just, just the all around. You know, these are the world's greatest martial artists, like I always say, you know, uh, and uh, one being the world's largest uh, platform uh, of martial arts, the world's largest stage of martial arts. You know, I, that's why I said our roster for me is, is, is the greatest in the world. It was truly amazing. I just want to ask one more question. So we know that one FC is going to be going to America and we know that one has held an event in Europe before. But can one fans across in Europe and in the UK, perhaps, could we see an official one card happening here over the next couple of years or so? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you know, when we look at the, you know, our expansion plans and, and, and what's going to happen in the next few years, uh, definitely Europe is on the map. Uh, obviously, the US is on the map first, um, but Europe is definitely up on the map. And, you know, even Latin America, you know, we we feel like, uh, you know, obviously from our social and digital stats, we, we can see that our fans are truly global all over the world. We've got crazy uh, one fans um, who enjoy, you know, uh, the variety and, 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 you know, of martial arts that we celebrate on our stage. And then on top of it, having the, the world's best martial artists. Next question goes to Dylan Balker of My MMA News. You were referencing Shudo a bit earlier, though. And, you know, Satoru Sayama, the founder there, obviously Tiger Mask in the professional wrestling world. Like, I know Arjun Buller has in past called out certain pro wrestlers for fights. Has there been any dialogue with any, you know, name value pro wrestlers about a possible mixed martial arts foray into the circle? Yeah, again, like we, we, we're talking to athletes from all backgrounds all the time. Um, and so, yes, there have been some pro wrestlers that have expressed interest. And, you know, so we're always constantly in, in dialogue again with rising stars, established stars from um, all, all martial arts backgrounds. Um, so, yeah. We have been in discussion, but nothing of note right now. Fair enough. And then also Pride was kind of referenced there. Some sequences in that Buchecha fight kind of gave me flashbacks to Mark Coleman versus Igor Vovchanch. And like, how cool is it for you just on the level of, I guess, being a martial arts aficionado to see such a, you know, immensely decorated BJJ player utilize the global rule set. In that, right. That so, way? yeah, you know, so here's the thing, right? It's, it's, if you look at our roster, we have world champions, you know, across the platform. I mean, it's just crazy how many, world champions we have from different disciplines from around the world who are either doing mixed martial arts or kickboxing or Muay Thai or et cetera, et cetera. We have, you know, the GOAT, uh, Gordon Ryan uh, in submission grappling. Um, he is coming, he's, he is on, uh, making progress uh, for a comeback in, in terms of his uh, submission grappling career. I heard he's uh, fighting um, Andre Galvao in ADCC, I believe next year. Um, you know, Bouchesh, obviously the greatest uh, Jiu-Jitsu stylist in, 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 uh, in terms of uh, he or, or, or Hodger Gracie, people will say, right? Um, but I mean, it's, you, you look at the Muay Thai guys, you look at the kickboxing guys, you look at the mixed martial arts guys, DJ, uh, you know, the goat, um, you look at, uh, in kickboxing, uh, Petrosian, the goat, right. I mean, I'm just, uh, out of our like 600 athletes, you know, I want to say half around half or so are, are like world legit world champions in their individual disciplines. Um, and, and that's, what's crazy about our roster. Like no other roster in the world of any organization has the depth and, you know, and collection of world titles from other organizations or, or in single disciplines uh, than one. I mean, you just don't have that level of expertise. And that's why when, you know, I kind of laugh when, when you see the Western organizations say, we have the best strikers in the world, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's not true. It's just not true. You want to look at elite striking. You look at, you know, a one Muay Thai match or one kickboxing. That is truly the best in the world. And, you know, I'm speaking as a lifelong martial artist. You know, I, I, Again, I have 37 years of Muay Thai as a student, competitor, teacher, coach, whatever, and now a CEO. Um, and I have about 16 years of jiu-jitsu, 10 years of no gi, and six years of gi. Um, and and I'm, you know, I'm speaking objectively as a lifelong martial artist. You look at the caliber, you know, yeah. And so it was, it, just watching Bushesha in action was was amazing. You know, when he when Bushesha uh, was competing in BJJ, you know, he's a heavyweight that moves like a featherweight. His balance, his explosiveness, his his he's just so light on his feet. His his weight distribution, um, he has the X factor in jujitsu. You know, a, a lot of heavyweights uh, in jujitsu don't have that there, or even in 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 striking for that matter. 
Um, very few heavyweights are super light on their feet with great balance explosiveness in the way Bushesha is. So yeah, Bushesha has a massive future. Our next question will go to Jay Anderson of Cage Side Press. The talk of uh, you fighting Dana, which I think is kind of hilarious. How uh, important is it for you to keep the uh, athletes as the face of the promotion? Because in other companies, it does feel like the promoter sometimes overshadows the roster. You, you know, like the, the, the two most common questions I get, like on my social media or even when championship is, when when will there be a one versus UFC event? And I would love to do that in a heartbeat, champion versus champion. And then the second second question I always get is, you know, whenever like I don't know my, my Brown Bay promotion, people are like, oh, then you go fight Dana, or whenever I post a video of me doing Muay Thai, I go fight Dana. Like I honestly don't think that would be competitive. I mean, I, I, does Dana even do martial arts? I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I don't know what his background is, but I, 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 yeah, I think he's an awesome businessman. He's an, he's a great fight promoter, but. I don't think he does martial arts. Not that I know of. Fair enough. And there's been talk of uh, TV deals coming up. And I know AEW just announced that they are moving to TBS. You were kind of paired with them on TNT. Is there anything in the pipeline in terms of one going back to US, US TV? And right. you know, will it be on TNT or something else so, going forward? Yeah. So uh, CAA represents us uh, in the US. Uh, I can tell you that we've been on a US media rights roadshow the last several weeks. Uh, talking to all the major uh, network broadcasters as well as the digital players in the U.S. Um, knock on wood, if, if conversations continue as they are, we will have some good news to announce, you know, in the coming weeks. But again, still, we're right in the middle of it. So I, I, I yeah. And obviously Turner is in those discussions as well, but it's just every broad, we're talking to every broadcaster. CAA lined this up for us. Obviously, Oak got the win tonight. There's the possibility of the rematch. And, and there's also Eddie Alvarez, uh, who has fought and lost to the new champ. Uh, is there anything planned for him coming up? Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, d definitely. I mean, you know, uh, I love Eddie. He's a phenomenal fighter. And I still think, um, you know, he's still, he hasn't had great performances in one, but is he still amongst the, you know, the best lightweights on the planet? For sure. I mean, I think when he left, the UFC, I think he was number three or number four ranked lightweight in the UFC, and then he came over here, and then he got knocked out, and then I think he's he's had a couple of losses here in one, right? So I think he needs to to, to find his footing a bit, and then um, you know, like I've always said, I, I I you know Eddie's won the UFC title, he's won the Bellator title, and and the only um, other global organization he hasn't won the world title is with with one, right? So um, yeah, I think he his pedigree, his career credentials. Um, if he puts a, a few wins together or even a one or two big wins, I, I think he, he should, he deserves a title shot. Next question goes to David, you David, you of CNN for the up and coming team Lakai fighters like Stephen Leman and John Lo. You know, uh, I'm just blown away by Joshua Pastel's performance tonight. He made it look easy. Um, you know, he did uh, team Lakai, a bunch of members had, had, had COVID earlier this year. You know, I was concerned about ring rust for Joshua. Um, but I mean, he just destroyed Yosuke. I mean, it was not even close. Um, and, and you know, the, the team Lakai guys, I, I, I'm, I'm really blown away by the younger generation. I can't wait for John Lo uh, Sangyao's uh, debut. I can't wait for Stephen Loman's debut. Debut. Um, y y team Lakai is genuinely one of the greatest uh, teams on the planet. Full stop. Full stop. Von Lozada of Phil Daly Inquirer. It's about what Dana said earlier, so I'm just going to read out what he said. So, Okay. So what Dana said was, the special rules fight was weird and won't work. He said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you want to watch Muay Thai, watch Muay Thai. What is, what's your, what is your response to that? First of all, like I said, Dana is a, a great businessman, but he doesn't know anything about martial arts. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even think he knows how to throw a, a leg kick. Um, he talks like it with his athletes, but I, I, I don't think he can if, love to see a video of him throwing a leg kick. So I don't think to even he's qualified to talk about Muay Thai. Um, so for me, it's, it's, uh, you know, we have a different approach, you know, uh, UFC is the largest mixed martial arts organization in the world. One is the largest martial arts organization in that we have made many verticals of martial arts, right? We have mixed martial arts. We have Muay Thai. We have kickboxing. We've even had a boxing world title fight. We've had submission grappling. You know, we try to, you know, excite and, and delight and surprise fan combat sports fans from all over the world uh, and, and from all genres. We really try and, and our, uh, we spent a lot of time or I did think about our hashtag and, and, you know, hashtags, we are one 
in many ways, it's not just about martial arts being one, you know, I mean, I, I do believe all martial artists on the planet, um, irrespective of whether it's karate or Taekwondo or, or, or wrestling or boxing or Muay Thai, you know, we're all on the same path, man. Like to, 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 to for me to, again, like, I just look, think back to my, my, my 16 years in jujitsu, you know, that path is the same thing for a karateka, for a, you know, a wrestler, for anything. So it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, one is the home of martial arts. So I, I like, you know, obviously, uh, yeah, I mean, he can take whatever digs at, at one he wants. I'll take a dig at his leg kicks. I'll <laughs> post a video of me kicking, uh, doing leg kicks. And let's see if he can do a leg kick. Or I'll do a picture of me rolling, a video of me rolling, and let's see if Dana can roll. Thanks, or I'll roll with him. Or I'll leg kick him. Chatu, this next one is from Ivan Degad, Philippines. The question is, considering what happened to Christian and Denise earlier this month, are you now looking to review one scoring rules and possibly make amendments? No, you know, uh, the, the the scoring system of one is 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 based on the roots of martial arts. You know, when you have a when you have a a, a, a ten point must system, especially for like mixed martial arts, you can have lay and pray. And that is not, you know, take down the last 10 seconds, you take someone down and you win the round and three rounds later, you, you win the fight. That's not martial arts to me. Like martial arts at the root of it is, can you defend yourself in a self-defense situation? Now, I mean, if you think about 5,000 years ago in Asia, when, when, when martial arts was born, um, it's about that it's root and, and, and across the entire continent of Asia, um, everyone learns martial arts for a real fight. And uh, for me, um, our rules, is about a real fight. It's not about a game, it's a real fight. And may the best man or woman win in a real fight. So that's why we judge the fight in its entirety. That's why a near finish, like a KO or submission or damage is considered the most, um, uh, you know, uh, in terms of waiting on, on our judging system. So it would be like a real street fight, right? Imagine you're in a street fight and for, you know, 14 minutes, there's dancing, and he's just jabbing, 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 jabbing. And the last minute, you know, you pick the person up, dump him on his head, ground him, pound him, and he's, you know, barely conscious who won the fight. The guy who jabbed for 14 minutes and scored points or the guy in one minute, because if it was a real street fight, that's how it would be judged, right? You'd be like, dude, the guy's out. Let's So... That is the kind of the, the ethos of real martial arts is about can you defend yourself in a self-defense situation? So that's what we, that, that's kind of the, the uh, I mean, that is the philosophy behind one. This last question is from Tudor Leonte of Sherdog. Uh, my question here for you, is one planning to resort to pre-recorded events again in the future? You never know because of COVID, right? I mean, um, I'm so grateful to the Singapore government uh, for, you know, creating a bubble for one. So we've had all these events, you know, all along, but you know, the, it, it's a crazy time all over the world, you know, in Asia, all the borders are still shut. It takes special permission to, to, to fly and to enter a country and quarantine all that stuff. And uh, so, you know, we're all live now. Um, and, and, you know, obviously uh, during the height of COVID, we, we, uh, did have some uh, uh, pre-recorded shows, um, and it's just so we could get the volume of of athletes uh, competing is is is, is the uh, the essence of it. But um, yeah, um, if I look forward, I think the plan for one is is to always be all live with the the greatest martial arts on the planet. That's that's the game plan, right? That's 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 always been since day one. It's just that. We're in extraordinary times. Before the COVID-19 outbreak, I heard the rumors about a uh, European debut for one championship. Is this something that is still interesting you to you? You know, to, to do you know, there, in the future? There are so many rumors about us going to this country or that country or this region or that region. You know, I I I don't want to comment. I mean, uh, you know, we have tons of European fans, we have tons of you know North American fans and Latin American fans, and obviously fans across Asia. Um you know, I've made no bones about it. We do want to go to the U.S. Actually, we would have already been in the U.S. if it, if it wasn't for COVID, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, Europe is, uh, you know, Europe loves martial arts as well. And we have a lot of fans. Yeah, 